Oh, well, this is the Stirling engine, it's so-called ring bomb Stirling engine, which means that the power piston is kinematically connected to a flywheel through a crank mechanism, whereas the displacer piston, which is sitting at the end of the displacer rod, has no connection to the flywheel. It's moving freely without any connection to anything, and it's simply moved by a pressure change. The uh, displacer piston has a virtual spring so it's levitating because it has two magnets, two neodymium magnets, one of them on the sleeve of the bearing and the other one on the displacer rod itself. They are set to repel each other. So they're sitting like in a suspended above each other. And therefore the displacer itself, which is inside the cylinder, is a gravity neutral. It's suspended. The uh, if you move manually, displace it in and out, you can observe the power piston also slightly moves. It's a normal syringe type of movement. Even though the, the volume of a displacer rod is small, pushing it in does create slight increase in pressure which power piston reacts to. That proves that the cylinder is well sealed with very little air leakage. The compression is good, in other words. Later on, when we fire our engine, you will see that this action will reverse. Pushing the displacer rod in will cause the power cylinder to go in as well. And pushing it out will move that out. But that's later, when we fire up the engine. But now, while the engine is totally cold, it's a typical syringe movement. Let's now apply the heat to the engine. We'll light up the burner and put it underneath it. The bottom of the engine is a hot part. So if we continue moving the displacer rod, we will see that our syringe movement has stopped and it's now reversed. By pushing it in, it moves in. Move out, move it out. As the bottom gets hotter, the amplitude of that movement increases. You can see that. Eventually, the movement is large enough to achieve the extremes of the crankshaft movement. When that happens, it means that the engine is almost ready to work. It's not quite ready. You can see it's almost happening now. It's not quite ready because when it's moving, there is an energy loss which requires to be compensated by extra heating. So it's not quite ready. But it's close. You can see it actually may, we can make crankshaft move by manually moving displacement. Okay, we'll try to give it a twirl, see what happens. No, not quite ready. It does take a while to warm up and traditionally four to five minutes. Well, I think it started. You can see how it works. The pressure changes pushes push rod in and out by itself without any mechanical linkage. In turn, the changing of the displacer position changes the temperature, which will push the piston in and out. It turns on a particular, at a particular speed. If the crankshaft wants to go faster, it will break the resonance in this moment, because as a virtual spring always have a resonance frequency, which it wants to stick to. Alright, well, it's enough for the first experiment, taking the heat off. It takes a while to cool down, but eventually it will stop. Here it is. Next experiment will be putting a load on it to drive something.